What was supposed to be an innocent family summer trip turned into a nightmare. In the blink of an eye, the little boy was gone. This is the story of Robert Bobby Dunbar. Robert Bobby Clarence Dunbar went missing from Louisiana when he was four years old. He was on a summer trip with his family, and this innocent summer trip has turned into a centuries-long mystery. The summer trip included fishing with his parents and younger brother on Swayze Lake. The family went back to the cabin around noon for lunch, and little Bobby Dunbar is said to have wandered off. When his family realized he was gone, the area was searched quite deeply, but no trace of Bobby was found. A set of footprints was found though, and it led out of the swampy area into the area with railroads. There were also reports of a strange looking man in the area around the time when Bobby went missing. All signs pointed to a kidnapping. Eight months later in April of 1913, a man by the name of William Cantwell Walters was charged and arrested for the kidnapping of Bobby. He was a handyman and was found in Mississippi and he had a child with him. The child with him looked an awful lot like Bobby Dunbar. Julia supposedly gave the boy in question to William as a travel companion so he wouldn't be alone. When William was arrested, the cops called Mr. and Mrs. Dunbar and had them come to Mississippi in hopes of identifying the boy as their son and for potential reunification. When they got to Mississippi and they got to see him, supposedly Mrs. Dunbar said that she wasn't sure if it was her son or not. However, there are others that say that when they saw each other, Bobby uttered the words, mother, and ran towards her and they embraced. Also when the boy thought to be Bobby was reunited with his family, he got to see his brother. There are two different reports that say when he saw his brother, he recognized him. And then there are other reports that say he didn't. Mrs. Dunbar said that she knew it was her son when she gave him a bath the next day and saw scars and moles that matched the ones that Bobby had. From there, the reunited family returned to Opelousas, where they were from, and there was a parade in the town where they celebrated Bobby's return. Julie Anderson came back into the picture not long after, and she said that Bobby really was her son, Bruce, and that she was unmarried and had a job as a field worker for William Cantrell Walter's family. Her contention was that she did say it was okay for her son Bruce to go with William for a family reunion, didn't say it was okay for them to go longer than a few days. Julia was shown five other boys who were around the same age as her son, and one of those boys was the boy now living with the Dunbars. When she saw the boy she thought was her son, the same one living with the Dunbars, Bruce slash Bobby, they didn't tell her whether or not that was the same kid until she said she wasn't sure if it was her son or not. The next day, she got to see him again, and she said that it was her son. By then, though, word had already spread of her false misidentification. Also, the newspaper zoned in on her being somewhat of an quote-unquote immoral woman because she had three children and was unmarried. However, two of her children had already died and because of all that she was denied from taking the boy she thought was her son back home with her. She eventually had to go back home to North Carolina and eventually made her way back to Louisiana for the trial of William Walters and she said that he was innocent of kidnapping and she was urging the courts to prove that the boy was really her son. From being there so much Julia Anderson started to become friendly with the people in the town of Poplarville, Mississippi, and the residents there started to believe more and more that William was innocent. The reason for the residents coming to his defense was that they saw William Waters and the boy in question a lot in the town. However, even with all the testimony of various residents and the testimony of Julia Anderson, the court still ruled that the boy was in fact Bobby Dunbar. William Walters was then found guilty of kidnapping little baby Robert Dunbar. The boy thought to have been Bobby Dunbar lived the rest of his life with Bobby's family. William Walters was in prison for two years before his attorney was able to successfully appeal his conviction and they were 
wanting a new trial. However, it was deemed to be too expensive and William Walters was let out. William Walters soon went back to his original lifestyle and then eventually got married. His children and other family members said that he would speak of his innocence until the day he died, which was April 7th, 1945. Julia Anderson moved to Poplarville and was welcomed with open arms by the residents in the town. She also went on to find happiness of her own with a man and had seven more children. She also became a devout Christian and a nurse slash midwife. Although she was happy, she would often speak to her family and friends about the little boy lost, and her circle always said that her son was kidnapped by the Dunbar family. Julia Anderson died in 1940. Hollis was a son of Julia Anderson's, and in 2008, he said that in 1944, the little boy everyone fought over visited him, and they talked. Julia's sister also said that she was visited by Bobby slash Bruce. Gerald Dunbar was the son of Bobby slash Bruce, and he said that when they were passing through Poplarville, his dad said, those are the people they came to pick me up from, and the Andersons were able to visit with Bobby slash Bruce for a brief time. Bobby slash Bruce went on to get married and had four children, and he died on March 8th, 1966, from a form of heart disease. His wife died in 1994 and was placed next to him. Years had passed since Bobby died, and one of his grandkids started to look into the case again and was hoping her research would prove true that her grandpa was in fact Bobby Dunbar. However, the more she looked into the case, the more she became doubtful. Her conclusion was that Bobby had more than likely fallen into an area of water and had been eaten by an alligator. Julia's and William's family members were relieved and elated to hear of her conclusion and that their names were finally cleared. It also helped mend broken relationships within her own family because so many of the family thought they were related to the boy thought to have been Bobby Dunbar. Eventually, a blood test was done on Bobby Dunbar Jr. It was compared to his supposed cousin and it was proven that he was not, in fact, blood related to his thought to be cousin. That's right, he was not blood related to his thought to be cousin. Alonzo was Bobby Dunbar Sr.'s younger brother, the original Bobby Dunbar, the one who went missing in 1912. Due to the findings of the blood test, the real fate of Robert Clarence Dunbar, the little boy lost, remains unknown.